All right, guys, so we just talked about high alpine survival essentials. And as per usual with this channel being heavily knife related and based, I thought I'd talk about some really good choices for high alpine survival knives. Now, this is one of the few situations, biomes or environments where I will genuinely recommend smaller knives. And that's because in this environment, things like hatchets, saws, and knives as a whole are not really going to be frontline tools for your survival. A lot more of your survival is going to be based on crafting shelter uh, with things that you can bring in, such as you know tarps and you know trying to locate and uh, process water and food. And there is actually quite a few edibles in high alpine areas, whether it be uh, natural like uh, plants and vegetation or animals. And so in that regard, these knives are going to be used a lot more in survival aspects for processing natural resources and animals more than they are going to be used for doing things like feather sticking or batoning because you're probably not going to find any batonable or realistic wood that you would baton in the high alpine because most of the trees up there are very, very thin, very spindly and just overall small. So with that out of the way, as always, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram, all of the support does mean a ton. And now let's talk about the knives. Okay, so the first one I've been handling it here for a little while is the Bark River Knives Aurora. Now this is probably gonna be, I think this is the largest one on the lineup and it is about nine and a half inches overall. And that's probably about the largest you would realistically need. What I do like about the Aurora too is, uh, and what I do like about the Aurora as well is that it has a very small, very thin tip that is very good for doing things like game processing because it's going to be very agile, very thin and very very good at fine, delicate tasks. So that's the biggest advantage to the Aurora, even though it has a larger size, I think this is a pretty good uh, kind of gap bridger where it is a larger knife or it is a medium sized blade, but at the same time too, it is still quite well uh, versed with doing smaller fine tasks with its very agile and very thin tip. So that is a big advantage to it. And overall, the Aurora is one of those blades that is very comfortable and very capable at a wide variety of different tasks. Of course, too, you also don't want to forget a ferro rod. That's pretty important as well. So overall, pretty good setup. Okay, next one up is going to be the Mora Garberg. Now, the Mora Garberg is one that actually doesn't get featured too much on the channel because while I do like the Garberg and many people love the Garberg themselves, I think that for most survival circumstances outside of the high alpine, it's just a little bit too small for me, but it is certainly a very robust, very tough knife, though I don't know if that's as applicable for this particular circumstance, but the Garberg is certainly a good choice and a reasonably budget choice being under a hundred dollars. So that is the Mora Garberg. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the LT Wright Legum, or Legum, however you would like to pronounce that. And this little Puko blade, once again, is just about a perfect size for realistic tasks in the high alpine. This is going to be a great blade for skinning and game processing because of its very sharp tip and kind of almost swept back, but just overall very sweeping blade it is very well uh, adapted for game processing and crafting as a whole. But uh, like I said, realistically, you probably won't be doing too much crafting, but a very comfortable blade and a very capable blade at a wide variety of different outdoor tasks. Next one up is going to be the Mora Bushcraft Black. The, bush, the Bushcraft Black has a lot of similar properties to the Garberg, but I think the nice thing about the Bushcraft Black is it is a little bit more, like it's a fully rubberized handle, so it's a little bit more comfy, and it is also a bit lighter weight than the Garberg. And once again, being that the tasks that you'd be doing are a lot more lighter duty with your blades, uh, I don't really think that there'd be any issues with the Garberg, or with the Bushcraft Black being a really suitable choice and overall uh, I think it would be just fine and very carryable because it is a very lightweight. Okay next one is going to be very similar to the Garberg and very similar to the Bushcraft Black and that is the Falkneven F1. Now the F1 once again is falls into a similar category as the Garberg for me and that is that usually I find it a little bit too small for true to form 
uh, survival tasks, but this is a good use and a good time to run the F1 because the F1 is going to be just fine. It's blade length just long enough. I mean, it's going to be able to handle anything that you'd realistically want to do out in the high alpine with a knife considering. So there's definitely uh, no hesitation for me in this one. I think it's an easy choice and about the only thing I'm not the largest fan of it is the good old Falkneven huge or very thick uh, spine to the blade because it's definitely very well overbuilt for this application, but that's not always a bad thing either. Okay, next one up is going to be the SC4. And I think the SC4, once again, is usually a little bit smaller than I like in a survival knife, but this is a good application for it because smaller blades are just easier to carry and more applicable to a high alpine environment where your tasks will generally be smaller. In addition, of course, the SC4 is a very well proven survival or wilderness survival blade. So there's really not much more that you could ask for out of this guy. Okay, and last one up on the list though, I feel like I could definitely go on for a little bit longer is going to be the 3DK or 3Dog Knives MAK or multi-animal knife. And this one, of course, as the name implies, is more of a skinning in general purpose wilderness blade that I think is very well adapted for the wilderness or for the high alpine environment. Overall, uh, this, this blade is going to do great for processing game animals, processing natural resources, and if you do need to step it up and baton or do any harder tasks, this knife is going to be able to take it in stride. And in fairness, most of these blades are going to be able to take any type of abuse you deal out to them. It's just that these it's just that these blades are a little bit smaller and usually, like I said, a little bit under what I would normally recommend for a survival knife because in most typical survival situations, you're going to want a longer blade to span pieces of wood that you can baton or work down um, or plane down. And in that type of situation, and those types of situations just don't normally exist in high alpine environments. Now, if you guys haven't checked out my high alpine survival essentials or want to know more about the survival kind of equipment kit as a whole outside of just knives, don't forget to check that video out. I will probably link it in a card somewhere around here. And uh, as always, guys, God bless and I'm out.